The SMART bio program is very much related to sustainable bioeconomy, production of renewables, but also completely new bioproducts. The purpose of Finnish bioeconomy strategy and also the purpose of our program is not only to replace the fossil de derived materials with renewables, but it's also important to produce completely new products for uh, business and international economy. The research in our group is focused on synthetic biology of cyanobacteria. These organisms have a very unique biological capacity to produce hydrocarbons, alkanes and alkenes in their metabolism. Why do cyanobacteria produce these compounds? If we could efficiently engineer more powerful systems, it would actually give many benefits for producing new renewable molecules. This covers all possible basic carbon-based products that we could imagine. And this, we feel, is where synthetic biology can actually help us. One of our current projects is hydrogen production from microalgae, from cyanobacteria and green algae. Microalgae have a very unique uh, capability. They can capture the light energy and they, re they can redirect that electrons to hydrogen. In order to improve hydrogen production from microalgae and cyanobacteria, we apply different approaches. And one of those approaches is the immobilization. Uh, now we have a collaboration with the industry partner Clover in Turku. And together with them, what we are using municipal wastewater where we grow the cyanobacteria and, and microalgae. When this microalgae can uh, consume phosphorus and nitrogen uh, compounds from the wastewater, and they can uh, make a high uh, um, biomass, efficient biomass, and later on that biomass can be used for biodiesel production. Uh, we are very much interested in the chemical defenses of plants and how these compounds could be utilized in different beneficial means like in medicine or nutrition. And uh, more specifically, we are focusing on the regulation of methionine metabolism and how that supports the biosynthesis of glucosinolates, which are the bitter tasting compounds that you find in different uh, cruciferous crops. We are utilizing the genetic toolboxes that are, are publicly available for Arabidopsis thaliana. So Arabidopsis is a very handy tool to do all kinds of molecular work because there are thousands of mutants available in, in stock centers and the genomic sequence has been available already for quite some time. It's very easy to do genetics with that. So um, if our research is successful, we will be able to show how different light conditions, for example, modulate the contents of uh, methionine and its derivatives like folic acid or the health-promoting glucosinolates in different uh, cabbage or uh, broccoli or kale species. And this will have uh, immediate applicable function and, and this will be applicable information. We would also like to identify completely new defense-active chemical compounds from plants and this might lead to discovery of completely new beneficial high-value compounds from the plant uh, material. So my project focuses on photosynthesis in conifers and in particular the seasonal acclimation in winter and spring. Conifers, as any other land plants, have to deal with changes in the environment as they are sessile organisms. So plant plants have developed therefore mechanisms to cope with these changes 
in the environment, for example, light, temperature, water availability. I'm interested in spruce in particular because from the photosynthetic point of view, it is quite astonishing that they can keep the needles green in winter. It's not about why they keep the green, it's the question of how. We are using various techniques, as for example, I'm looking at the protein level, trying to describe the, photos the photosynthetic apparatus of spruce, using gel electrophoresis, separating these proteins, and then also using mass spectrometry to then identify these proteins. The better we understand these acclimation mechanisms in, in conifers in general, not only spruce, the better we can also predict how, for example, these trees are going to behave, or like you can expand that to the um, ecosystem level even. So that might be interesting for forest trees or um, other more applied researchers. We can give them an understanding to then figuring out a better way of um, how, for example, finished forests will behave in the future. If you think about climate change, these models need a basic understanding of what is happening in the boreal forests, also of Finland. Thank you.